Welcome, honor guests, to the land of TMS. I am the Busybody Baroness, and this is a recap of today's episode, General Hospital Wednesday. Okay, let's start over at the Metro Court Pool, where Ava was talking with Trina about uh, Curtis's progress and how he's doing. Um, she also asked her what her plans were after summer. Was she going back to the Chuck? Did they offer her, you know, a full time or part time position? She informed her that they did, but she wanted to come back to her gallery because her hours would be flexible and it's just best. Ava said, well, it's not the Chuck, but I'll be glad to have you back. So like I said, she'll be running the gallery by herself in no time. Um, Over in the pool, Spencer was holding Ace and yelled, hey, Trina, you want to join us? And it was really cute. Ava did note, though, she says that Spencer is really good with Ace. Trina says, yep, you should see him at home with him and how great Spencer is, you know, taking care of him. That's when Ava says, I guess that means Spencer is spending a lot of time with Esme, which must be uncomfortable. Um, I'm sorry, I got a text from my son. Um, so that's when Nina showed up and she, you know, found Trina with Ava and she, you know, they spoke about Curtis as well with, you know, them being kind of like best friends. I always considered Nina and Curtis damn near best friends. Like in his circle is Drew, then Nina. Right. Like those are like his main two. OK, so anyway, um, they were talking about how he's in rehab and he, he'll get better and all of that. Nina, ex- uh, Trina excused herself so she could go join the baby and Spencer in the pool. That's when Nina sat down to speak with Ava and asked Ava what nightmare was she referring to? Because Ava invited Nina to have a celebration drink. And Nina was like, well, what are we celebrating? So Ava was like, we're celebrating the end to a nightmare. So that's when Nina says, well, what nightmare are you talking about? And she says, I assume it's what I walked in on with you and Sonny because it seemed kind of tense in that office. And that's when Ava says, well, pretty much, she didn't tell her. She was like, it's best that you don't know. And she kind of dismissed it. Um, she told her that she didn't want to go into details, but Nina says, I'm marrying Sonny. And Ava says, yeah, unless the SEC tip thing comes out. And Nina was like, well, then that was rude and stop deflecting. Um, and that's when uh, she says she finally wants to tell her what's going on. And when I tell, she says, when you finally want to tell me what's going on, you know where to find me. And that's when Nina left. Over in the pool, Spencer and Trina were playing with the baby. It was really cute. That's when Esme appeared in the doorway lurking around. Him and Trina, she didn't interrupt them this time, though. Trina admitted that she was worried about her mom and how she's going to handle everything. So that's when Spencer suggested that they, you know, that she goes ahead and see about her mom and check on her. Trina says that's a good idea. They kissed. She left. Esme appeared, and she headed over to Spencer and Ace. She says, it looks like you guys are having fun. She says, I got your text and hope that you still be here. And that's when she revealed her little bikini, her little pink bikini. And she asked Ace if he wanted to swim with mommy. And um, it, she, Spencer did notice, okay? I mean, what else does she have to offer? Anyway, let's go over to Portia's office where she was looking at her wedding pictures. Marshall busts in and says, listen, we have a problem because Nika says there's way too much work to do over at the Savoy. She can't do it all on her own. That's when um, Portia recommended maybe we should hire somebody. And Curtis said, I mean, sorry, Marshall says nobody can take Curtis's place. He's the heart and soul of the Savoy. People came to the Savoy just to see Curtis, which is true. I mean, I really liked when they opened the Savoy for Curtis. I was glad when they finally gave him something solid to do instead of just throwing him in that standard. You're a PI. You're a PI. It was like everybody in like in Port Charles was a PI. So I'm glad that they gave him something solid. And I really hate that they put him in this, this storyline with him being in the wheelchair because I would have liked to see him work for the WSB. Um, like an active member of the WSB. Y'all know what I mean. So anyway... Uh, Marshall, they flashed over at the rehab facility where Curtis was feeling defeated because he couldn't lift himself out the chair like he could the day before. Roy refused to let him give up and Selena was spying in the doorway. Eventually, Roy ordered Curtis to stop. He said, you're overexerting yourself. 
with the dumbbells. He says, what you can do, though, we can go ahead and get the resistance bands. So when Roy walked away to get the resistance bands, Selena offered Curtis her deepest sympathy. He was like, why are you here? And she says, at times like this, we need our friends. And Curtis looked like, girl, we are not friends. Who says we are friends? And she says, of course we're friends. But he says, I don't think of you as a friend. And she says, um, he she hopes to that he continues to think of her as a business partner and that's when she prepares she says i want to make an offer on the savoy but in the, i'm not gonna lie when she was standing in the doorway and she was seeing him struggle she looks very sad like she did look like she was sad for her friend but selena you know you can't have no friends like you too too rough she doesn't like Sonny. Okay, Sonny is the kind of gangster that he knows how to turn it on and turn it off, right? I think somebody mentioned this in the comments. They don't like Selena because she's too intense all the freaking time. In that one moment when she was in the doorway staring at Curtis, that was the most human I actually seen her like actually care like even with Brad like Brad is her family and she was supposed to be so concerned about him and his well-being but you didn't come off as a concerning TT, you know. You came off as his boss. Like, she's very hard. Maybe the new writers are trying to go in a different direction with Selena and her character soften her up a bit. I don't know. Because I would like to see her, maybe not so much a redemption, but something a little bit less than Ice Queen all the time. Because I saw it in the doorway. And we see it in her fashions. No, Ice Queen wouldn't pull off an orange dress like Selena does. Her fashions are too beautiful for her to be so angry all the time. Okay, so anyway, when she offered that, sorry if y'all hear a car, it's just I'm at home, it is what it is. Marshall bust in and was like, um, no, we don't, the Savoy is not for sale. And she, no, that's not what he said. He says, actually, Marshall says, over my dead body. And Marshall says, Curtis's family will take over running the club until he gets back. And that's when Selena uh, says, well, it's not easy. And she was like telling him that, you know, he may be in over his head. I kind of liked how Marshall didn't back down from Selena. Ain't nobody scared of you, Selena, with your mean self. But anyway, she left. Marshall says that the family is going to run the club. She's... Uh, Selena left. Curtis told his dad that he can handle Selena. Marshall apologized for overstepping. Um, he says, listen, I'm going to help you keep the club going until you can come back on your own. Curtis told him, listen, it's a lot that you don't know, and it's really complicated running a business like that. Marshall says, look, this is my way of paying you back for giving me my family. He says, you can teach me. He says, you can tell me everything I need to know. And that's true. He can help. That'll help keep Curtis's mind off of everything else right because he can continue with his recovery he can have his business his dad he can teach his dad it's, you know marshall come to him like listen how much tequila do you we need to order and this and that because i don't think curtis is going to be in rehab that long i really don't so anyway let's cut over to the hospital where michael and willow finally are outside willow was looking great she had on makeup for those of you that was sick of her looking like a pale male so she's you know um, they were there for a checkup. They ran into Austin and uh, Michael spotted Dex in the background lurking. Austin said he was glad to see Willow was doing well and says he won't keep them. Austin walked off. Michael followed Dex and Willow told Michael um, how for once she's not nervous about her checkup and she knows she'll get good news. Willow met with Terry. Michael cornered Dex about following Austin, and that's when Dex admitted that it's a job for Sonny. And Michael says he wants to know, you know, what's going on. Because he has to, because Dex has to uh, report to Michael. So Michael can report to Carly so she can make sure that Sonny is safe. Austin headed to his office where he found Betty. <laughs> they are so funny, though, y'all. I know they the bad guys, but... These are the funniest bad guys ever. I'm sorry. They remind me of those three ghosts. Don't y'all remember those three ghosts on Casper? They were supposed to be like bad ghosts and always being mean to Casper, but they were really kind of stupid. <laughs> That's who they Betty Austin and Mason remind me of. I'm gonna see if I can find a picture. Because one of the ghosts wore a hat. I'm gonna put up the picture. Okay, so anyway, Austin was in his office where Betty was there, and she says, um, she showed him the flash drive. 
And he was like, what is that? I don't know what that is. And then that's when Mason showed up. And he says uh, that he trailed Austin to his office. And Betty, oh, sorry. Mason showed up and he says he's trailed to Austin's office by Dex. So I think they, I already think they know that Dex might be following Austin. I'm not sure. Anyway, Betty said that he has, the, uh, she has the pikeman goods for him. And that's when Dex was listening at the door. My bad. I tangled that up. My bad. My bad. Dex trailed Austin to his office. You know. He, he's listening. But I still think that Austin knows that he's being followed. I said that in the last uh, video. But anyway, anyway. Um, Dex was listening at the door. Austin says that he's done everything that's been asked of him. And he says, that means I'm out. Mason says, you're not out until the boss says so. Back over in her office, Portia started researching wheelchairs and home improvement stuff for Curtis. Trina showed up with some coffee and thought that she could use the company. That's when she saw what her mom was doing. She says, I didn't realize this was going to be so expensive and so much work. Um, she says, actually, uh, Spencer, it was Spencer's idea, mom, who pushed me to come and check on you. But the coffee was my idea. And that's when Portia explains that she ordered almost everything Curtis would need. And the company is going to come out to make sure everything is ready for him. Trina says there's more than just installing ramps for Curtis's recovery. Portia says, I know it won't be easy, but the first step is getting him home. That's when Willow located Michael. Um, she saw him wandering around the halls and waiting, and she gave him the good news that she can finally go outside, honey. She said it'll be some time before she can actually travel and attend big concerts and stuff like that. But, you know, she can go to the stores and probably live her life normally. He says she's happy she got a he says he's happy that she got a good report and suggested they go celebrate. Back over at the Metro Court pool, Esme, Ace, and Spencer were playing and Ava continued to drink and kept her eye on them. Michael and Willow showed up and Ava says that they just miss Nina. <laughs> and Michael says, Ooh, lucky us. And that's when Ava says that she hopes that they can give Nina a chance. Willow says, Yeah, I've been trying with Nina. Um, and that's when Ava declared, you know, that it's good that Nina is really trying and all that. It was funny, though, because Michael meant that, like, he really is sick of her. But anyway, uh, Ava declared that it's better to spread love and all of that. And Michael was like, you seem to be in a good mood. And she was like, I am in a good mood. Let's go over to where at the coffee bistro where Sam and Cody were talking. Cody says, I need your help and believe that Sasha is in danger um, and they have to do something to help her. Cody says uh, he snuck in to see Sasha and how she was. She was freaking out and thought he was there to kill her. So, basically, long story short, because I don't want this video to be too long. He pretty much updated Sam on what was going on, everything, how he got in there to see Sasha with the help of Brooklyn. Um, and he says, we have to help her. We have to do something quick. So let's go over to the police station real quick where Gladys charged in on Dante and said that she wanted a restraining order against Cody because he showed up, you know, she didn't say why, because once she started ranting and raving and her, Mac heard Cody's name, he came out and that's when she explained that um, she wants a restraining order against Cody because he showed up at Ferncliff and upset Sasha and it's just not safe for her to be around him to be around Sasha. That's when Cody showed up at the police station and was like, you know, he showed up to get some help for Sasha, but ran into Gladys. And Gladys was like, see, keep him away. You're getting a restraining order on you. So when he found that out, he kind of lunged at Gladys. <laughs> he lunged at Gladys like he was, I'm telling you, it was funny, but not funny, but funny. More funny than not. I'm sorry. He lunged at her. Um, it's cause he was screaming at Dante and stuff and she held up that restraining order and he lunged at her to attack her. And so they had to restrain him and put him in the interrogation room. And that's when Gladys insisted that they arrest Cody. He was like, he could have killed me. And he was like, yeah, I can arrest him. But if I arrest him, all the accusations against you are going to come out. And we're going to investigate those accusations. And he asked Gladys, he says, is that what you want? And Gladys says, you win. But I expect that restraining order to be enforced. And she stormed off. That right there, honey, just lets Mac know that everything Cody said was true. Because if he was a liar, liar, pants on fire, why didn't you say, okay, investigate. I want him arrested for trying to attack me. Right? 
psh, girl, bad. You going down, down. I cannot wait. But Mac went into the interrogation room and told Cody how lucky he was that he was inches away from going to jail. And Dante asked him, like, what is going on? I want to pause for a second because how my historian, shame, shame. Y'all did not catch on the fact that I didn't know uh, the backstory between Dominique and Mac is similar. I think this is fun and amazing. Y'all didn't pick up on that. That the Sasha and Dominique both are having mental issues and amazing. Okay. Because when um, Mac recalled that story, he was telling it to Dante and... Um, that's when Dante flashed back of Cody telling him that Mac is really his father. So I really can't wait for all this to come out. I'm excited now. At first, I didn't care. I was mad. I was like, it's dragging out. It's taking too long. But I'm kind of excited now for Mac to find out about Cody because Cody's redeemed himself so much by trying to help Sasha. It's great. Okay. Speaking of Sasha, let's go over to Ferncliff with that nice nurse who I hope is some kind of way related to Miss Wu. Don't come for me. Don't think, I, I hope she's related to Miss Wu in some shape or form. Y'all know how the stories are. Somebody is always linked to somebody in some kind of way. Um, Because I like to keep her on. I hope she's related or she knows somebody in town to work because she seems really nice. But she told Sasha, she said, what is wrong with you? Like the drugs that we're giving you shouldn't make you act like this. She says, is somebody giving you something? And so Sasha was kind of, she said something like this. They're giving me something. And she said she did some blood work. And that's when that Dr. Montague came in. And unfortunately, the young lady had to tell the doctor because that's her job. She says, I did some blood work on Sasha to see why she's acting like this. I think she's getting outside drugs from somewhere. So um, he says, you know, she's very fragile right now. And um, all of this. So Dr. M drugged Sasha some more. He, you know, got rid of the nice nurse, drugged Sasha some more, knocked her out, went to, uh, nurse Mandy, which you call his wife and said he wanted the nice nurse taken off of Sasha's case because he feels that somebody is giving her something that she's not supposed to have. And that's when, um, Janice, Mandy is, that's her name. Mandy is the nice nurse. Janice is the other nurse. So, um, he told Janice to take Mandy off of Sasha's case just to be safe. That way nobody can be accused and we can figure out what's going on. But of course, we know why he wants her off the case. But anyway, later on, Mandy went to Janice about being pulled from Sasha's case. And Janice told her, don't take it personally because these visiting psychiatrists, all they think, you know, they think they can run the place. And she was just trying to make it like it's not a big deal. Meanwhile, Dr. Montague showed up again to give Sasha more drugs. After Dr. Montague left Sasha's room, thanks to Janice, he thanked Janice for taking care of the problem, and he walked off. When Janice left, she headed in to check on Sasha, and Sam appeared from around the corner and was listening at the door and heard Sasha scream, telling Janice to stay away from her and to leave her alone. Sam is going to get to the bottom of this. She is. Um, okay, you guys, that's it for the recap. I'm gonna put y'all comment video together. Hit the like before you leave and I'll catch y'all in the comments.